Nobody needs to be afraid of jazz theory. It's fine. What you should be worried about is ignorance. With jazz theory, it's better to be afraid of not knowing than to be frightened of the unknown. There can be a lot of theory in jazz, but you don't need all the theory all the time. You only need as much theory as you need. I'm going to quickly explain why jazz theory is perfectly fine, why it's worth teaching and learning jazz theory, and I'm going to question why some people carry on about jazz theory in a peculiar way. Hi, I'm Dr. Saul Richardson from Jazz Workshop Australia and welcome to Teaching Jazz. In this context, theory refers to principles that explain how something works, sounds or appears in multiple examples. One fairly useful definition of theory could be a supposition or a system of ideas intended to explain something, especially one based on general principles independent of the thing to be explained. And that's from Oxford Languages Online. <music> saw a piano that was the colour white, you might point to it and say, that piano is white. When you say that that's a white piano, in one sense, you're just describing one example of a particular thing. But in another sense, you're using theory. For instance, it implies that there's a category of things called pianos, and it implies that there's a category of things that can be the colour white. <laughs> In one way, piano and white are theories. And the reason for that is there are many different pianos and there are many different things that are white. Theory frees us from being trapped by context. Instead of learning one tune after another as a series of unrelated instances, theory offers general principles that apply to multiple tunes, even though they might appear to be different on the surface. Jazz theory is a really powerful tool for learning, for growing, and for gaining inspiration. Music theory gives us efficient and effective ways of talking to other people about music. It gives us a shared language, a common vocabulary. Theory doesn't have to be the same as jargon or highly specialized technical language. The deeper you get into theory and the more specific or the more precise you need to be, then jargon and technical talk, of course, becomes more important. However, much of the time, simple, plain language is perfectly fine. With jazz theory, what matters is that there are patterns behind the way things sound, behind the way that people do things, behind the way that tunes work, behind the way that musicians perform. Knowing about these patterns, seeing these patterns, being able to recognize these patterns makes it easy to understand jazz and it makes it easier to play, to teach and learn jazz. There's a lot of jazz theory and it can become quite complex and that's because there's a lot of jazz. But you don't need all theory all the time. My professor and supervisor from back when I was studying for my doctorate is an expert in theory, not in music theory, not in jazz theory, but in theory itself as a concept, as an object of study. His name's Dr. Carl Mapen, the creator of a field called LCT, which stands for Legitimation Code Theory. Uh, but that's a topic for another time. Dr. Mayton argues that you only need as much theory as a problem requires. If you or your student are a beginner at jazz or intermediate level, you probably don't need all that much theory. Then, as they develop and advance, they can learn and use more theory as they need it. Aspects of theory that will probably be useful for new and developing players include things that are related to chords, chord scale, theory, simple chord substitutions, chord families, that kind of thing. In my forthcoming video, about, which is an introduction to jazz theory for beginners, I'm going to go through those things in a step-by-step, -step, simple and logical manner. It's important to understand that theory doesn't mean the same thing as rules or laws. Not in the everyday sense. For example, in the state of New South Wales, where I live, if you're driving and you come to a stop sign, the law is you have to stop. That's not what jazz theory is. Principles of jazz theory aren't like that. Jazz theory describes patterns in sounds, patterns in the way that people do things, patterns in the way that you can manipulate sounds to create different effects. What jazz theory is not is Jamie Abersold telling you that you must do this or that in a particular way. Jerry Coker is not going to throw you in prison if you do things your own way. Dulcie Holland is not going to report you to the authorities 
if you play an augmented triad in root position. David Baker certainly isn't going to issue you with a fine if you fail to use the bebop lick or if you don't use one of the 26,025 patterns from one of his books. I say this because the way that a lot of people carry on online or in their books is to make out that jazz theory is some kind of authoritarian attempt to dictate to musicians how they must play. It's not. What an idiotic idea. Ignore that kind of nonsense. Use jazz theory to help yourself or your students to learn and play jazz effectively. How to control the music they make by seeing patterns and principles at work in jazz, the way it's played and the way that it sounds. Understanding some basics of chord scale theory can help students to independently figure out what key centers things are in. Understanding some principles behind bebop style improvising can help students to learn how to play in that way, should they need to or should they want to. Knowing something doesn't stop you from creating or exploring. It helps. Learn about jazz theory. Learn about as much jazz theory as you need to or want to. Don't fear jazz theory, but do steer clear of ignorance. In other news, a new video from me is forthcoming, a step-by-step -step introduction to basic jazz harmony, jazz theory. Anyway, thanks. See you soon. Bye now.